Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y. And we're also given that f of 1 is equal to 3. We're supposed to evaluate f of 7. So we're given a value, the value of a function at one point, and we're given a rule that kind of maps a sum to a sum. So this should remind you Cauchy's functional equations. So let's just say f is continuous in this case. And how do we solve for f of 7? I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. So for my first method, instead of trying to find what kind of function we have, I'm going to go ahead and try to get to f of 7. First of all, notice that I have f of 1. And I have the freedom. I can replace x and y with pretty much anything, OK? since this function is continuous at every real number. So let's go ahead and replace x with 1 and y with 1. What is that going to give you? It's going to give you f of 1 plus 1, which is equal to f of 1 plus f of 1. Remember, this is the rule given. f of x plus y is f of x plus f of y. So when you replace x and y with 1, you get the following equation. Make sense? Let's keep track of what we replace x and y with. This gives us f of 2 equals f of 1 plus f of 1. But if you add the same thing twice, it's just 2 times that. So now we do know f of 1 is equal to 3 because it's given, right? So we can go ahead and plug it in. If f of 1 is equal to 3, then 2 times 3 is going to be 6. Therefore, if f of 1 is equal to 3, then f of 2 is equal to 6. But wait a minute. How does this help us find f of 7? Well, we're going to get there little by little, right? So from 1, we got to 2, which means we can double and get to 4, right? So let's go ahead and find f of 4 from here. To find f of 4, we're going to replace x with 2 and y with 2. So we're going to repeat the same process with 2 plus 2 this time. Of course, it's going to be f of 2 plus f of 2. But 2 plus 2 is 4, so f of 4 is 2 f of 2. But we just found that f of 2 is equal to 6. So f of 4 is just going to be 12. So we can kind of come up with a pattern here. f of 1 is equal to 3. Then f of 2 is equal to 6. Then f of 4 is equal to 12. f of 8. So think about the inputs. The inputs are powers of 2 because we double every time. And that also doubles the outputs. Make sense? OK, great. So that should hopefully help you find f of 8 next, right? Because f of 8 is just going to be 24 by following the same pattern. But wait a minute. We just missed f of 7. Why? Because we got f of 8. How is that going to help us? Well, there's a couple ways to go about it. Let me show you both. First of all, if you have f of 8, you can find f of 7. Why? How does that work? Well, you can kind of look, go through 1 plus 7, right? Since f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y, you can replace x with 7 and y with 1, and that'll do the trick. See how functions work? f of 8 equals f of 7 plus f of 1. You're going to find it indirectly, but that's perfectly fine. f of 8 is 24. f of 7, we don't know. We're trying to find it. And we do know that f of 1 is 3. Remember, that was the first value given. By way of subtraction, f of 7 is just going to be 21. Wait a minute. Something interesting is going on here, right? Well, before we get into that, let's go ahead and talk about the 1B approach. OK. Now. The 1B approach is getting f of 7 differently. Now, instead of using f of 8, instead of going forward and then backwards, I can do the following. I have f of 4. If I can find f of 3, then I'll be happy because that gives me f of 7. How do you find f of 3? Well, f of 2 plus 1 is f of 2 plus f of 1. You know the trick, right? I don't need to write the original equation again. This is f of 3. This is f of 2, and this is f of 1. But you know you know them, right? Um, f of 1 is 3. This is 2 times 3, 6. And so it's going to be 9. You get the idea? Wait a minute. We're supposed to find f of 7, so we have to continue. f of 4 plus 3 is equal to f of 4 plus f of 3. But I do know that f of 3 now is 9. So this is 9. And f of 4 is 2 times f of 2, which is 12. Their sum is 21 again. Wow. We got the same answer. Is that a surprise? No. It's supposed to be constant, right? f of 7 is always the same for this function. Now, what, what is going on here? OK, let's write down some inputs and outputs. f of 1 is 3. 
f of 3 is 9, f of 7 is 21. Three data points should hopefully give you a good idea. Wait a minute, what is going on here? Aren't we just multiplying the input by 3? Of course, this is not a proof by any means, but I suspect that's the case. But that brings us, not to the end of this video, to the second method exactly. So let's go ahead and do the second method now. So the second method is using the idea from Cauchy because this is one of Cauchy's functional equations. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to guess what form of function is going to satisfy this because if I can get a general solution, then I can find anything I want, okay? So, let's see. Now, what are we supposed to do? Well, we're going to guess what type of function are we looking at. There's obviously different types of Cauchy's functional equations like f of x plus y could be f of x, f of y, f of x, y could be a sum, and I'll talk about all of these really briefly, and then we can have a product to product, right? Okay, so when do these work? So for example, if you look at the first one, uh, I mean this first one, then you hopefully we're going to realize that f of x is actually satisfied by an exponential function, a to the power x. doesn't have to be e to the x. It, it could be k times e to the x, which could be written as a to the x. Make sense? How about the product to sum? Does that look like the log function? Yes. If you said log uh, base a of x, or you could say k ln x. Yes, k ln x is going to satisfy this equation. And this one is probably something like a polynomial maybe, or a power function. But guess what? You can find that one. This one, this, this one right here, is actually going to be satisfied by a linear function. What kind of linear function are we looking at? f of x equals mx plus b. Let's go ahead and test it out. If f of x is that, then their sum f of x plus y is going to be m times x plus y plus b, which is mx plus my plus mb. No, not just mb, Mercedes Benz, no, just b. And this is supposed to equal f of x plus f of y, which is mx plus b plus my plus b. Wait a minute, b cancels out, this means b has to be 0. In other words, this is a linear function with a 0 y-intercept. In other words, our line needs to go through the origin. So f of x equals mx is going to satisfy this type of equation. Make sense? Okay, great. So if f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y and f is continuous, then we have a solution f of x equals mx where m is a constant. Can it be zero? Yeah, I think so. Now, how do you find them? We are given f of 1 equals 3. Isn't that awesome? f of 1 is just m, m equals 3, and this implies f of x equals 3x because f of x is mx. And since f of x is known, now I can find f of 7, 3 times 7 is 21. This is why 3 times rule worked for this particular function. Now, here's a million dollar question. What type of functional equation is going to have a solution of mx plus b where b does not equal 0? Something to think about. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.